Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am holding a legend in my hand. This is my very first Commodore 64. Now, obviously this thing looks like it's seen a little bit better days. It's uh, a little bit off colored and uh, you know, I don't really hear, maybe a little bit of rattling on it, but uh, this is the first one I've ever had and I'm kind of excited about it. But for as cool as these things are, they are known to be particularly unreliable. And the main reason for that is this. And uh, someone swears to me that this one has been uh, reworked and I'll probably take it apart and look. But these power supplies, what they would do, um, this is an original, at least enclosure of a power supply. These power supplies, as they would start to go bad, the voltage would actually drift up. And so as it drifted up, the power supply would kill the computer and, uh, you know, that's a bad thing. The upside to these things being um, maybe not the most reliable is that they are very, very repairable. And so um, what I wanted to do is to build the ultimate kit for repairing these computers. Now, I only have one of them, but my plan is that over time I want to be able to fix them. And how else would I start my ultimate repair kit than with a PCB from PCBWay.com. Now this was designed by the legend C64 Istanbul, who is one of the people who provides shared projects on PCBWay.com. And so he, of his own goodwill, designed this cartridge and it combines a diagnostic cartridge to help you test a misbehaving Commodore 64 with a dead test cartridge, which allows you to test a completely dead Commodore 64. And out of the goodness of his heart he designed this thing and he uploaded it to pcbway.com and you can go there and you can put it in your cart and for just a couple of bucks you can have 10 of them sent to your front door and so i want to thank c64 istanbul for designing this thing and i want to thank pcbway.com for sponsoring this project and for sponsoring the projects of so many creators because they help keep stuff like this alive they help keep my youtube channel alive and i've learned so much from working with those guys now one of the coolest things about this project is that it is very easy to build and so um, I'm just going to be putting a couple of sockets, a couple of EEPROMs, and a couple of capacitors and so um, you can put a reset button in there which I'm going to probably do the reset button on one but not the other. We'll, I'll show you why in a minute. Um, but so we're just going to go ahead and solder this together. Now um, one of the things that's really neat about this is that it is more than just a dead test cartridge and a diagnostic cartridge. I'm going to make sure that's pressed all the way down. There we go. It is also just a generic 8-bit cartridge, which means that if you find other um, Commodore games and things like that that you want to burn to a cartridge or burn two to a cartridge, you can actually do that. And so um, if you notice, one of the things here, it says that this is an Ultimax cartridge, which goes through FFFF. And then this one here, um, it goes through nine FFFF. But the idea is that there are a couple different styles of cartridges for the Commodore. And this actually emulates both of them. And so you've got the opportunity to have either kind of game um, on one cartridge. And so it's just really a flexible thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder this together and then we will see how it works. All right, so we are gonna put a 100 nanofarad capacitor right here. And uh, I've decided to hold off on the button and I'll show you why um, a little later on in the video. And then I'm gonna trim the lead and we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. All right, so I've showed you a bunch of times how to burn ROMs on the channel, so I'm not gonna go over that. Um, but what I did do is my little contribution to the community is that I took an existing double case and I actually um, wrote some words on it so that you can tell which one's which when it's inside the case, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm just gonna pop this thing together and then we're gonna test this thing out. We've got an entire kit of dongles that goes with this thing all available at pcbway.com. There is one to go in the user port. There's one to go in the cassette port, one to go in the serial port, one to go in each joystick port, and one to plug in where the keyboard connects to the computer. But why, you may be asking, and the reason for that is that this diagnostic cartridge has the ability to send and use the ports, and these things are basically loopback devices so that it can make sure that when it sends something, it gets the right thing back. So there's this whole thing here that works together to become the ultimate diagnostic tool for the Commodore 64. So let's check it out. Now we're going to get back to the test in a second, but I do want to point out that I was given a very generous donation of basically an entire van load of stuff 
uh, from one of you guys. And uh, in there was this awesome Commodore 1702 monitor. And don't be jealous, but the door is actually still attached, which is apparently a rarity. So I am very blessed to have this. And, and uh, that is just awesome. So we're going to get back to all this stuff and figure out what's going on here as we look at the cartridge. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is the dead test cartridge. Now, of course, I'm not using a stock power supply. I have an aftermarket one here that has been tested and the voltage looks good. So we're going to turn the thing on. Now, one of the coolest things about this thing is that in the event that there were bad chips that were preventing the thing from booting, the screen would actually be flashing white a number of times. And this thing has a manual and it tells us, hey, if it flashes four times, then you know that means that this chip is bad. And what's really cool is that there's enough circuitry on the cartridge to boot the machine with a huge number of chips missing, like over here, like you can get rid of all three of the ROMs and the SID chip, and there's all kinds of chips that could be completely missing from the computer in order to, um, and still have the thing boot, which is just absolutely amazing technology. Now, obviously in my situation, this computer's booting, so that's not as necessary right now, but it is very, very cool that even if the computer couldn't boot, couldn't put anything on the screen, uh, this cartridge has the technology to flash the screen to start telling you where to look. Now, I did notice a little bit of gel barness on there with, you know, there's little vertical stripes um, on the thing. So we're going to see if the diagnostic cartridge tells us anything about that. But first of all, I've got to plug in all these dongles. Now, they say all over the place, don't plug them in backwards. And so we definitely want to do that. Um, you don't want to short anything out. So we're going to go ahead and make sure all these get plugged in the right spot, um, the right orientation, and then we're going to boot up the diagnostic cartridge. All right, so I have absolutely Frankensteined this thing with dongles. We've got the user port, the cassette port, the serial port. This is our video cable here. We've got the diagnostic cartridge in. Uh, we've got the control ports hooked up over here. We have our aftermarket power supply giving us good, clean power. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see what the diagnostic cartridge has to say. All right, so this is very interesting. What it's telling me is that the control port uh, is bad and the 6526 chip in U1 is bad. And so that is actually a control chip for the controller port. Um, and so that makes me think that um, that chip probably is bad, which is causing the port to report bad. And uh, those chips aren't cheap. I think they run like 30, 35 bucks a piece, which, you know, it's not a ton, but um, these computers aren't that expensive. But I had no idea. I mean, I bought this thing and first time really playing around with it. As you can see, it's looping through the test over and over again. But because I have these dongles, because I have this equipment, I can get some real information and find out that there's a problem. Um, so anyway, I'm going to look into that and I'm going to see what it's going to take to fix this thing. But I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate PCB Way for sponsoring this video. I appreciate the legend C64 Istanbul for designing all this stuff and making it available so that we can just hit a button online and order it. And that is so cool. So anyway, hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.